Hello, and welcome to Star Control 2, or in this case, technically this is the Urquan Masters, with me, Casey Scrag. So, this is my personal favorite game ever. This is my personal favorite. I love this game so much, just want to get that out of the way. Now, I am using uh, HD graphics, as you can tell. I'm actually trying out, uh, uh, you can see in the bottom right, the HD mod. This is a beta version of it. Uh, so I'll provide the download links to this mod as well as the free game that you can download on your own whenever you'd like. I'll put that in the description for this video so you can download it yourself. So anyway, let's start a new game. Now, I will skip this intro because during my testing I found out that this this intro is actually broken. So I'm not going to show you this intro for the HD version. The HD version's intro is a little messed up. Instead, I'll show you the original uh, lower resolution intro, which, yeah, anyway, I'll show you. The Interstellar Frungi League presents <sighs> the Urquan Masters, a remake of Star Control 2. Based on the source code of Star Control 2. Originally created by Fred Ford and Paul Reich III in 1992, set free into the open source community in 2002. There were many great battles. Earth and her partners in the Alliance of Free Stars against the evil Urquan and its hierarchy of battle thralls. And the Urquan were winning. Meanwhile, on the edge of the known frontier, an amazing discovery was made. Far beneath the surface of an unexplored alien world. A huge underground city, filled with the technological wonders of an advanced alien race, the Precursors, who vanished a thousand centuries ago. That's a long time ago. But then the main Urquan fleet broke through the Alliance's defensive line, isolating the planet and stranding the scientists a hundred light years away from Earth. <gasps> Egads! They waited, hopefully, for a rescue vessel. Which never came. Twenty years have passed. We, the survivors of the research mission, have colonized this world. We continued our investigation of the underground city and we have discovered its purpose. It is a factory. A factory for building starships. But there aren't enough materials to make a complete vessel. We can finish only the skeleton of one starship. But that must be enough. Because you must captain the vessel. And return to Earth. To travel the great distance, you must push through into hyperspace. find out what has happened over these many years. Tell Earth of our plight. And if the war with the Urquan still rages. Fight for Earth and the Alliance as well as you can. Alright. So... I hope you enjoyed that intro. That is actually the old intro. 
not with advanced graphics, although I don't actually know if that was updated. So anyway, the regular captain name up here in the right is Zelnik. I am not Zelnik. I am Casey's Crag. And Vindicator, as much as that is an awesome name for a ship, of uh, the uh, <laughs> the Interstellaria ship sounds a lot better to me. <laughs> Let's go with that. So anyway, as as you can see here, this is a uh, this is Sol. This is our solar system and that planet there that's earth so i want to say something first of all i've already beaten this game before i've played it through in its entirety uh this, however this right here this uh hd mod and you can see the planet sort of wrote uh revolving around the sun and in fact the sun's little glare and stuff like that all these new graphic things are entirely new to me I've never played with them before, except for a little bit of testing I did just a second ago before this recording. So anyway, I know just about everything uh, about this game's plot, etc. But I'm going to pretend I don't for the sake of making a video series on it, because I think this is just an awesome game and I want to play it through. So anyway. I'm not going to, I'm going to try, I'm going to do my best to not use anything that I already know about to take advantage of the game and to change things. So what's this? Attention interloper, heed this recorded message. This drone vessel speaks with the voice and authority of Irquan. You are trespassing within Irquan space. This world, Earth, may not be approached for, for any reason. reason. Nor will hostilities against our orbital platform be, be tolerated. tolerated. In addition, your ship does not respond to standard hierarchy identification transmissions e and is therefore deemed to be independent. What a horrible thing. This is not permissible. Only subservience shall be tolerated. This drone now leaves to inform the Urquan of your transgressions. He does now, does he? You are commanded to remain here and await the arrival of the Urquan. Disobedience, Disobedience will, will be, be punished. punished. I love that voice. The uh, the Urquan voice to me is just so awesome. All right, so as you can see here, this is, uh, or maybe you can't tell because it looks so red uh, and glowy. This is Earth. And you can see a map of the planet down below. So we can scan Earth. We can see some statistics about Earth. We can see its mass. and I guess all of those are related to Earth. So there are a bunch of those things are going to be 1.00. Anyway. Because Earth is what we base everything else around. So we can't scan it. We can't dispatch to it. It's glowy. What is going on with Earth? Let's find out. There's a space station and there's the moon. Let's go see what this space station, or the Irquan mentioned it as their orbital platform. Let's see what this is. Attention, unidentified space vessel. I am Starbase oh. Commander Hayes of the Slave Planet Earth. Our hyperwave zone test extremely situation critical. Energy cores exhausted. Scanners and deep radar are non-functional. We cannot identify your vessel. Are you the scheduled hierarchy resupply ship? Repeat. Are you the resupply vessel? Uh, no. But this is the Ar the Starship Interstellaria. The star what? <laughs> Never mind. Look, we won't last much longer. Here's our situation. According to our oath of fealty to the Urquan, we must maintain the starboard. But we have no space vessels of our own, and the shield prevents us from contacting Earth. But we're totally dependent on the Urquan supply vessels for everything we need up here. 
We know there's a hierarchy based on the but we can't contact them. The IRQUAM were supposed to resupply the base at regular five-year intervals, but we haven't received anything in almost eight years. What we don't recycle, we can usually synthesize. But to do so, we need replacement radioactives for our generator energy cores. If you could bring us some radioactive elements, we can fabricate the cores ourselves. Are you willing to help us? Uh, sure, I'm willing to help. Uh, I really like the effect that the HD mod has done here. This uh, this sort of thing with the glitching out of the screen and the uh, the voice being cut in and out, that was not in the original game, so I like that a lot. Or I guess the voice itself wasn't in the original. But anyway, uh, I already know where it is, but... The fastest way to get radioactive <laughs> in this system would be to land on Mercury and scour the surface for deposits of radioactive elements. But be careful. Mercury is a pretty inhospitable place. Watch out for earthquakes and those high temperature areas. AKA flames that run along the ground and it can hit your little pod dudes. Lander pods. Or landers. I'm sure they will reward you. Oh yeah, definitely. They'll definitely reward me. With death. Okay, so. That's what's going on now. We need to go to Mercury to get the radioactives to give back to the Starbase Commander, and then we can move on to do something else. Alright. Let's go over here. Mercury looks way different in the uh, in the original game or the low resolution game. Holy crap, that texture! <laughs> All right. Whew. Well, anyway, so yeah, we can see here. There's there are three different scans. There's the mineral scan, which scans for minerals, of course. Energy, which scans for energy signatures, which could be anything. They could be like. Uh, buildings normally they're structures of some kind uh, glowy things anything that you know you're supposed to look at I guess and then biological means life forms so anyway as you can see the orange there are some orange ones these guys I think these are the radioactives I I think they are let's find out though I might actually be wrong so those fire whoa okay all right woo woo oh no 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 how do how do how do I okay there we go <laughs> I'm still figuring out the controls because I I customized them I'm used to spacebar being my uh, lift off button from way back when I used to play this and I changed that and I was completely unprepared for that oh. Well, that's interesting. So it leaves part of a deposit? I don't know. Or were there, were there... Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Partial deposits now. Ow, ow, ow. Ow, ow. Okay, I'm losing a lot of crew. This is not the best thing ever, but... Maybe these are the radioactives. Actually, I already have radioactives. So I guess I don't need to do this. But I would eventually pick this up anyway. So I, I might as well just do it while I'm here. If I lose a few crew, that's fine. It's okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. I couldn't even see what was going on there. <laughs> I don't even know what hurt me. But in general, you don't want to lose crew. So this is bad that I'm losing so many crew. Oh, those fire spots. Oh, jeez. So scary. Whew. Oh no, I, I accidentally launched without... Oh well. Okay, there we go. Got it. Done. So we've picked up all the stuff on Mercury. And let's just float this way. Go back to Earth. Oh yeah, and I'm also using some new music for this, by the way. So, uh, 
This music you're hearing right now was not in the original, I don't think. Or maybe it was. I can't remember. This might be the... Well, this might be 3 do music. I can't remember. <laughs> Did you find any radioactive elements for our power cores? We are ready to transfer radioactives. We're initiating transfer of radioactives, Captain. Now, as soon as our engineers can refit the energy cores... There, that's much better. Power Ooh. ratings are climbing. Cool looking. Life support is coming back into the green. Deep radar systems and sensors are now online, and I can scan your vessel. What the hell kind of ship is that? <laughs> Just who are you, Captain? Uh, I am Captain Casey's Crag of the Starship Interstellaria. We are the survivors of the Star Control Science Research Team to the Vela Star System. I love his haze button on his shirt. Looks more like... It might be imprinted in his flesh, though. <laughs> anyway. Star Control Science Mission, huh? <laughs> Captain, I served as a Star Control Officer during the war aboard several <laughs> cruisers in the uh, Cold yeah, Front. Yeah, Captain. And if there'd been any scientific mission to Vela, I would have heard about it. I love his attitude about this. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, Captain. Yeah, I was, I was actually really important once. The mission was highly secret. Hmm. You know, come to think of it, there were some rumors that Corridor 9, the Special Operations Division of Star Control, was directing some hush-hush operation near Androsynth Space. Oh, were they now? The Vela Star System. Yes, that would be the right direction. So, Captain, if you say it's true... And I do. How do you explain that huge alien starship you're flying? And why are you here? What do you want from us? To conquer you! No, I'm just kidding. <sighs> Ah, we have returned to Earth to give you the technological secrets of the Precursors and to help you fight the Hierarchy. This is true, but I also want to ask a few questions to get a background of what's been going on. Okay, what do you want to know? What is the purpose of this starbase? Urquan slave law requires that we maintain an orbital space platform to assist Hierarchy vessels which are in need of repairs or fuel. Since okay. the shield around the Earth cuts us off completely from the planet, we're dependent on the Urquan resupply ships for our non-renewable resources. The resupply vessels are supposed to arrive every five years, at which time the Urquan somehow penetrate the shield and exchange those of us up here with replacement personnel from the surface. Interesting. What is that strange red glow around Earth? When the Alliance lost the war, the Urquan gave Earth a single choice. Join the hierarchy as battle thralls and fight for the Urquan to enslave other sentient species or become fallow slaves and be forever imprisoned on a single world encased in an impenetrable energy shield here on Earth. We choose not to fight for the Urquan. Ah. Where are the Urquan now? Soon after the Earth accepted the Urquan's oath of fealty, they departed, leaving hmm. behind a battle group of Spathy and Illrath ships based on the moon. Oh, okay, so that's the start. I'm sorry, that's the uh, base on the moon you were talking about. What was that red, fast-moving object in orbit around Earth? That thing that came and talked to me. That was the Urquan security drone. It keeps an eye on us. Captain, what happened to the spy drone? <laughs> I love you can lie here. Er, we destroyed it. Yes, sir. We blew it to bits. We blew it to bits. I'm in a different red thing. Never mind. <laughs> when we approached, it transmitted a warning and warped into hyperspace. Oh, no. Right now, it's probably cruising through hyperspace, heading right towards the closest hierarchy outpost. When the Urquan find out that you're here, they're going to send a combat fleet instantly. Ah. Uh. Well, I guess I'll have to watch out then. We've returned to Earth to give you the technological sequence, blah, blah, blah. I've already said ah, this. Fight the Urquan. Win back our freedom. I remember having such thoughts myself once, long time ago. That was in the first years after the defeat, when it was still mm. terrifying to look up and see the bloody glow of the pulsating slave shield overhead. Though day and night we gazed up at the impenetrable wall as though the sheer power of our hatred would pull it down. But over the years, I spent so much of my time struggling down on the surface, under the shield, and then later up here trying to keep the station alive that I'd forgotten what it means to be free, to hate our Urquan masters. Mm. And now here you are, in an alien ship of unknown power, offering me your assistance to fight against the hierarchy again after all these years. 
Captain, your offer is intriguing. It is? It's tempting to think that with your advanced precursor technology, we can somehow crack the Earth's slave shield and reassemble the Alliance to attack the hierarchy. And this time, win the damn war. Yeah! Consider the consequences if you should fail. Oh. The Urquan won't just punish us here on the station. Oh. They'll exact a gruesome retribution on the surface below as well. Uh oh Before I commit this station to helping you attack the Urquan and accepting the risk of annihilation if we are defeated, I have to make sure that you and your ship have what it takes to oppose the hierarchy. Oh, yeah. I'll make you a deal. Okay. If you can eliminate the alien base on the moon and get rid of that threat at least, I will seriously consider your offer. Oh, okay. Well, let's do that. What details can you give us about the base? After the Urquan erected the slave shield around the Earth and established this space station, they decided to leave a contingent of combat ships close to the Earth to keep they watch didn't on our trust planet us. and confirm that they were obeying the Urquan slave laws. I'm certain they're still out there on the surface of the moon because we can pick up a constant stream of alien broadcasts. Hmm. Well, Be let's careful, neutralize Captain. the base. There are probably a dozen Spathy eluders and Ilrath Avengers down uh -oh. there on the lunar surface. I don't know why they haven't come after you yet, but when they do, you'd better have your weapons armed and your thrusters burning hot. Oh, man. Sounds dangerous. All right, well, let's go ahead and check it out then. And... Um... <laughs> Let's go Scanning the planet So this is the mineral scan The auto scan does all three scans There's the energy signature And these are biologicals So the moon is a lot less dangerous Than that other planet Mercury Oh Well that's strange well, first of all, let's uh, get some minerals. I wonder if I'll fight them when I touch that thing. Alright, let's get up this stuff. Oh! Well, it's nice to know that you get partials now. So now you can... Uh, in the old game, you had to either pick up a, a, an entire stack of minerals, or if it was going to... If picking it up would fill up your... Uh, your storage capacity on your lander then it would just you'd lose that extra bit it would just disappear forever I don't know what these guys are they don't hurt me good <laughs> bullet doesn't go very far with this thing oh I guess I blew up two of them all right, report from surface. We have discovered an alien base and have explored its interior. The installation must have been abandoned many years ago, but great care has been taken to make it appear active. Life support systems are functioning, fusion generators are at full output, and robotic construction vehicles have been programmed to roam the lunar surface, bulldozing moon dust into random piles. In addition, we have found the installation's... something... Hyperwave locked in transmit mode. Endlessly playing the same alien recording. Huh. Although we cannot translate the message, our nanotech Ensign Rigby believes the message is some kind of alert or mayday broadcast. The base is filled with useful materials and equipment. We will scavenge as much as we can and bring it aboard immediately. Well. Interesting. Um, so I guess there's nobody on the moon. Well then. And these, yeah, they're just random bulldozing robots. And I don't get anything for killing them, so... I'll just leave them around. Oh. Wrong button. Alright, well. I guess there's nothing to do on the moon then. Let's go back to the starbase and let's save before we do. Whoop. Whoop. Ah! Dang it. <laughs> uh, Have you dealt with the base yet? You sound impatient. We found the base, but it was abandoned oh years God. ago. 
All these years we've been listening to their incoherent broadcast, and we never even guessed. Captain, listen closely. Uh oh. Lowering sensors show a ship closing on this station fast. Uh oh. Our computer identifies it as Ilrath, Avenger class. Oh I man. I think you've got a fight on your hands, Captain. Your best bet is to wait until you have point blank range. Captain, yeah. It's jamming our signal. Actually, it's not the best idea to wait until you have point blank range. Just saying. By the fetid breath of the dark twin Kazan, a human and an alien starship. A human. How fascinating. When I intercepted that Urquan drone and learned that an unidentified starship had approached Earth, I never expected to find such a remarkable vehicle in the hands of a human. Humans are prey animals. Weak and helpless. But here is a human in an armed starship. And therefore, in direct violation of the oath of the okay. I am sure our masters, the Orquan, will punish Earth most severely for this treachery. Oh, I'm sure. I present them with the twisted wreckage of your ship and your many charred corpses. corpses. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh yes. Okay, so this is the Ilrath. Uh, it's funny how he, uh, the Starbase Commander says Ilrath Avenger class. There's no other class. <laughs> you can't fight any other ship than the Avenger class. So anyway, where the hell did you come from? It would be a pleasure blasting your ugly face out of the stars. Surrender, or you will be annihilated. Let's be reasonable. We can coexist peacefully. Let's blast your face out of the stars, feeble mammal. Though my ship lacks a functioning cloaking device, and oh. many of our crew are dead. Well, thank you. My gods, Dogar the Black and Kazan the Unseen have personally confided to me that they despise you humans and that they will help us to kill you all. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure they said exactly that, and they're going to help you. Yep. Definitely gonna happen. So I'm not gonna use this ship because it's so slow and the turning rate sucks. I just got a crappy gun on the front. I will use the Earthling because it's a much better ship. All right, go. Yeah. If you get a bad spawn in this, it actually is possible to die. So I was hoping he didn't spawn right next to me. Yeah, that, whoa, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> I crashed into Earth. Oh. What a beautiful sight, Captain. I haven't seen an Avenger blown away like that since the battle in Draco. I guess you've <laughs> shown that you can handle yourself in battle, Captain. So my last reservation about helping you has been dissolved. Yeah. I will commit this station to helping free Earth and defeat the Urquan. We may get our atoms rearranged in the process, but by God, Captain, we're going to try. By God. So the obvious first step is to get the precursor equipment and software over here so that we can make it work with our ship repair fabricators. But then what, Captain? Then, Commander, we will proceed to kick some major alien butt. Er, trust me, Commander, I have a plan, a really good plan. But for now, it must remain a secret. We will slowly build our strength, unify an allied star fleet, and bring the Urquan to their new equivalents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go with that. plan, Captain. Let's get to work. Knee equivalent. By the way, Captain, I think we need a name for this new alliance we're going to forge. No. Oh. Since it was your idea, it's only fair that you get the honor of naming it. So, what will it be? Oh, gosh. Ah. The Empire of Casey's Craig. <laughs> oh, I remember this. The New Alliance of Free Stars, the Concordance of Alien Nations, the United Federation of Worlds, the Empire of Kid of Casey's Crack. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go with this just because this would be fun, but no. Okay, that sounds pretty inspiring. So be classic. It. The New Alliance of Free Stars. Now, Captain, I expect the configuration process for the Starbase to take at least two weeks, so let's get to work. All right. Cool stuff. So we got the commander on our side now. To report, Captain. We have successfully integrated the precursor technology from your ship into our fabricator huh. system, and as you awesome. can see, we've already begun minor repairs on your ship, patching up some of the micrometeorite holes. We noticed that your ship mm. does not have an emergency warp escape unit, so our engineers rigged up some for you and each of your escorts. 
Now you should cool. be able to escape from a bad situation with the touch of a button. But there is a cost, however. <gasps> the unit gulps up five fuel units each time your precursor ship uses it. Oh. Also, we now have a limited capacity to make modifications to your ship, to refine starship fuel, to build additional combat ships, and to train new members of your crew for the flagship and any ships you acquire for your fleet. Oh. Captain, I know you're eager to get to work, so I'll be brief. If you have any questions how this starbase works, what resources we need, or just some background information on the galaxy, don't hesitate to ask. I won't. Well, let's unload some minerals. All right. Not a bad job, Captain. Yeah, a little bit of space. So anyway, cool stuff. We shall await your return, Captain. I'm sure you will. All right. So we got the commander on our side. We've got a star base now. This is excellent. So I'll show you what else you can do next episode. Have a good one, everybody. I am looking forward to going through this amazing game with you guys.